Welcome to today's video. Today we have a revisited, uh, let's say, benchmark and review about the Arctic Freezer uh, 34 eSports Duo. And I decided to do something special and build this, uh, well, almost white build because the GPU is some sort of a grayish uh, color. And yeah, that's most likely because we have also the cables as well going white and gray. So that's completely unimportant. Uh, what I wanted to achieve here is to have a nice uh, white and clean build, uh, which uh, definitely is, I would say. And you can leave your comments below if you uh, think otherwise or you actually agree. But yeah, leave a comment below what you think. So today we have something quite interesting. We have the white Fantex P360A case with Fantex Eclipse P360A case. We have two addressable RGB fans just to get some colors on the front. Well, basically white to go with the theme. Uh, then we have the NZXT N7Z590 uh, with Intel Core i7-10700K. We have three of these uh, outstanding fans, and I'm saying outstanding because they're dead silent. Uh, these are the Bionics P120 pressure optimized uh, PWM PST gray white fans and the same fans go on the freezer 34 esports duo also we have the msi rtx 3070 supreme x which you're already so used to this card that is starting to get boring a bit but uh, as you can see of course uh, cable mod uh, pro custom sleeved extenders 24 pin uh, 8 pin and 4 pin for the eps and 2 8 pin with bridged connection now, even though I mentioned all the components inside, we're going to uh, just be based on this one and these three. And uh, quite interesting to finally, after I think three years, of course, there were revisited models and something completely upgraded. But uh, we have um, quite interesting cooler, as I already stated, and it's quite nice to see how it nicely cools down the CPU. Uh, one more thing, uh, white uh, team group extreme addressable RGB RAMs that are just a perfect touch for the whole build. Now, when we're talking about the Arctic uh, Freezer 34, we have some uh, nice specifications for a nice budget CPU tower cooler. We have a uh, direct touch for copper heat pipes uh, with six millimeters diameter, aluminum fins, uh, actually 54 of them with the thickness of 0 0.4 millimeters. I used MX4 thermal compound from Arctic, of course, uh, the same fans all as they are on top. So two 120 millimeter uh, Bionics PWM PST. Uh, the fan speeds is from 200 to 2100 RPMs, which are controlled PWM, and you have the possibility to daisy chain them as well. And when we're talking about socket compatibility, 1200, 11.5x, 2066, 2011, and the AMD AM4. I was quite curious what temperatures will I get with uh, 10700K, especially with this cooler, because last time I think they even have something here. No. On this one they don't, but the, uh, on the past model that I reviewed, they, they actually had temperature indication about a uh, couple of, I think, two CPUs that were tested, but that's uh, unimportant. In AIDA 64 Extreme Edition System Stability Test with GPU and CPU running on full load in this configuration, two fans on front from Fantex, three as an exhaust, two on the passive heatsink of the CPU tower cooler. The CPU after half an hour on full load, 68 Celsius degrees. And it was climbing from, it started from 63 and was constantly climbing through that half an hour. And eventually it stopped at 68 Celsius degrees, which is just amazing. And not to mention that the GPU was at 61, so the front fans did quite nice job taking, uh, creating an intake. And I wanted to test this Arctic uh, Freezer 34 with a case that has a nice opening on front. And Fantex P360A actually does have a nice fine mesh on front, which doesn't have 
any um, dust filters, but the front mesh part uh, creates uh, some sort of a dust filter and you don't need to have additional dust filters that are usually magnetic like this one on top. On top it's a, complete, a completely different story just because of the uh, radiator and fan placement and yeah, that's it. So, quite outstanding performance. I was actually kind of worried when I checked, uh, because it was 2-3 years ago, when I checked the bottom part, the cold plate that touches the IHS of the processor, it was so small compared to the even the older generation Intel Core processors, but it did the job. It's 68 Celsius degrees with this kind of processor, it's quite outstanding. The only thing that I would suggest is don't use this cooler with these RAMs on this motherboard because as you can see the fan sticks out for a half a centimeters because of the RAM clearance. It's uh, too high a bit and that's the only thing that I see a bit of uh, awkward, let's put it that way. But still I can close the panel and it works perfectly fine. Uh, so yeah, quite curious what you guys think. Leave a comment below. I'm really satisfied with the build. First of all, I've seen loads of positive comments on my Instagram profile with the build, especially uh, in this uh, color scheme. So I hope you guys like it here as well. Uh, it was something different and I'll have another Fantex white build coming quite shortly, which will actually have a custom liquid uh, cooling system inside from EK. So that's another story for another video and you got to subscribe so you don't miss that video. Click the like button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss it and hopefully I will see you in another one. Thanks for watching today's video. Bye bye.